Question 1. What is immunoelectrophoresis? Answer. The resolving power of immunodiffusion was greatly enhanced by immunoelectrophoresis. This involves the electrophoretic separation of antigen into its constituent proteins followed by immunodiffusion. This technique is performed on 1% agarose gel. Antigen mixture is first electrophorized and separated based on charge. Troughs are then cut in the agarose gel, and anti-serum is added to the troughs. The agarose gel is then incubated 18-24 hours during which the antigen and antibody diffuse towards each other. The formation of precipitin bands can be observed for the individual antigen components. Question 2. How is immunoelectrophoresis more advanced than paper electrophoresis? Answer. In paper electrophoresis, serum proteins can be separated into five different bands but the same protein using immunoelectrophoresis can be separated into 30 different proteins. Question 3. Give some applications of immunoelectrophoresis. Answer. This technique is useful for testing normal and abnormal proteins in serum and urine. It is useful to determine whether a patient produces abnormally a low amount of one or more proteins. It is also used if a patient overproduces some serum proteins. Question 4. What is countercurrent immunoelectrophoresis? Answer. This technique involves the simultaneous electrophoresis of antigen and antibody in the gel in the opposite direction resulting in precipitation of point where there is optimum concentration of antigen antibody. This method produces visible precipitin within 30 minutes and is 10 times more sensitive than the standard double diffusion technique. Question 5. Give application of countercurrent immunoelectrophoresis? Answer. This technique is applied to detect the antibody against hepatitis B and to detect antibodies against S. L. E. Systemic lupus erythromatosis and used to detect specific antigen forming occurs in cerebrospinal fluid. Question 6. What is immunofluorescence? Answer. Fluorescence is the property of absorbing light ray of particular wavelength and emitting rays in different wavelength. Antigens that are bound to cells or tissue sections can be visualized by tugging the antibody molecule with a fluorescent dye or fluorochrome. Question 7. What are the most commonly used fluorescent dyes? Answer. The most commonly used fluorescent dyes are fluorescein or rhodamine. Both dyes can be conjugated to F, C, region of antibody without affecting the specificity of the antigen. Question 8. Into how many types is immunofluorescence is divided? Answer. Immunofluorescence is divided into two types, direct immunofluorescence, indirect immunofluorescence. Question 9. What are heterophile antigens? Answer. Heterophile antigens are polysaccharides which are structurally similar because of their limited complexity. They are derived from members of widely separated taxonomic groups. Question 10. What is Horseman antigen? Answer. The glycolipid antigens are present in most tissues of guinea pigs but not in the R, B, C. They are found in gastrointestinal mucosa in some people. This Horseman antigen will not induce antibody formation. Question 11. Into how many types is antigen antibody reactions are broadly classified? Answer. It is broadly classified into five precipitation, agglutination, complement fixation, immunoassay using labeled reagents, immunohistrochemistry, immunofluorescence. Question 12. Briefly describe about precipitation reaction. Answer. When a soluble antigen combines with corresponding antibody in the presence of electrolyte at a suitable temperature and pH, the antigen antibody complex forms an insoluble precipitate antibodies that form precipitate called precipitants. 
Question 13. Give their mechanism of precipitation. Answer. Merak proposed the lattice hypothesis to explain the mechanism of precipitation. The amount of precipitate formed is greatly influenced by relative proportions of antigens and antibodies. The valency of antigens is multivalent. When antigen antibody is in optimal concentration, the precipitation is complete, so that large lattice is formed. Question 14. What are the three distinct phases that a precipitation shows? Answer. The three distinct phases are ascending part called zone of antibody excess, a peak called zone of equivalence, a descending part called zone of antigen excess. Question 15. What is zone of antibody excess? Answer. In this, the first available antigen is completely filled by antibody molecules. Hence, no antigenic determinant is left out free. Unreacted antibody is seen in large amount. Hence poor lattice formation. 